Hi there and welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Series video. And this video is actually an introduction to Virtual Private Cloud or VPC. So what is a VPC? Well I like to think of it as having a private data center in the IBM Cloud. So it's a it's kind of a slice or a space within the cloud um, that you can call your own and you can actually start to build your applications in. So it allows you to easily create um, subnets. So those are uh, different networks onto which you can place your um, your virtual server instances um, so you can start to segregate your applications up. So if you're used to using um, classic infrastructure um, you may be used to using things like um, Viatas or other devices that actually create and manage those subnets. But within uh, VPC you no longer need to actually have those devices. You can create and manage subnets quite easily without them. So VPCs are private by default so that means that any internet traffic by default can't actually access your VPC. So what you have to do is actually create internet gateways for public access, and again, that's really simple and easy to do. Um, it's very secure, um, so it uses ACLs or access control lists and, and security groups, which um, I talked about in an earlier video, um, to actually filter and manage traffic for you as well. So those things act like um, effectively like virtual um, firewalls almost, um, and they, they actually enable you to very very tightly control the traffic uh, that can actually come onto your into your VPC. And, and how they actually then access the components within the VPC as well. So the other thing to note with a VPC is that everything is virtual. So it's all virtual server instances. There's no uh, there's no bare metal in a in a VF, in a VPC. Um, virtual load balancers. Um, the firewalling is done through um, security groups, which of course are virtual. Um, and uh, there's no need to actually create any uh, things like Viatas to actually create and manage your subnet. So everything is virtual. Everything is is really done through a dashboard or through the uh, or through the CLI. So now we're going to talk about the components of a virtual private cloud. It's quite important to have um, a basic understanding of, of these different components um, so that you can actually then start building a VPC. So we're going to start over on this left hand side. So as you know, the IBM cloud itself is is broken into regions. So a region is a is basically a geographical area, and the places where VPC is currently available um, are Dallas. Uh, Frankfurt, Hong Kong, and uh, if they're not already online, then very soon you'll also see Sydney and London, and other regions are going to be rolled out over the next uh, over the next few months. Um, so then, within a region, uh, you then have zones, and zones are effectively the data centres that are in those regions. So if you think about Dallas, uh, then you might see um, Zone One, Zone Two, and Zone Three in the Dallas region, and they, they, those are effectively separate. Um, data centers. So effectively you create your virtual private cloud within a region. So the first thing you have to do is select the region where you want your virtual private cloud to be. And then you can start to create subnets. The subnets actually live within a zone. So a zone, as I said, is, is a particular data center. So you can have multiple subnets within a zone, um, or you can have multiple zones um, that then own subnets. But what you can't have is a subnet that actually spans the zone. So that's the first thing to, to, to remember. So once you've, uh, once you've got this, this structure here, um, let's start to look at these, uh, these, these different components over here. So public gateway, um, so you create public gateways to provide access um, to the internet for your VPC. And uh, public gateways are actually attached to subnets. Um, so you can decide whether or not you want to keep a, a subnet private. If you want to keep a subnet completely private, then, um, then don't attach a public gateway to it because that will then give it internet access. Um, you can create VPNs and there's VPN as a service. So a VPN actually allows you um, private uh, network access to your VPC. Um, direct link. Now direct link isn't something we've previously spoken about in any of the, uh, the in any of these videos. But direct link is a is a service uh, which provides um, a, basically direct network connectivity between the IBM cloud um, and your premises. A uh, floating IP, so a floating IP is an IP, is effectively an IP address, a public IP address um, that you can give to certain components within your uh, within your VPC. I guess most notably to uh, virtual server instances and load balancers, um, you'd, you'd need to give a floating IP to. And a floating IP would also go onto a public gateway as well. So think of floating IPs as uh, public IP addresses. So load balancer, um, again you have get load balancer as a service. Uh, and again, I mean, this this pretty much works like any other load balancer that, that uh, you've seen. And, and if you've seen my previous videos on load balancers, um, then it works in a similar way. So you can actually 
um, balance load balance your traffic uh, coming in between uh, between the two zones as well. So this so this load balancer will actually um, sit kind kind of around this kind of area here between the two zones, um, logically speaking, and uh, will then direct traffic between the two between two subnets if you wanted to. Uh, a virtual machine, obviously that's a virtual server which you create within your subnets. And then block storage. So, um, so what you can do is, is actually create block storage in here as well. Um, so that's effectively uh, SAN-like storage. So if, again, if you want a description of block storage, go, go and see the video that I've created on block storage. Um, and, and that actually really easily connects to your virtual machines. Um, so again, we'll, we'll show you that as we go go through these series of videos. So, um, so subnet, um, as I described, has a has something called an access control list on it. So this effectively um, uh, is is a list of uh, inbound and outbound rules. Um, so you can start to filter and block traffic um, based on uh, based on IP um, from from your accessing your particular subnet. So that's a security uh, feature. And then we have security groups and uh, security groups again. I've, I've created a video about security groups, um, so you can you can go back and watch that if you if you need to. Um, but a security group, in a nutshell, is kind of like a virtual firewall. Um, so you can set rules up to again um, restrict traffic coming in and out um, to your to your virtual machine. So again, a bit, a bit like a firewall. Okay. So other key features of uh, virtual private cloud. Um, are the following. So as, as I mentioned, the simple uh, block storage integration. So if you need to have um, additional storage and SAN-like storage connected to your uh, virtual server instances, then it's dead easy to do. And uh, I'll show you how to do that as we go through these videos. Um, it easily connects to classic infrastructure. So if you already have um, infrastructure uh, created, so so with that I'm, I'm talking about, um, say, bare metal machine, bare, bare metal servers, or virtual server instances that you've created outside of, uh, of uh, VPC, um, then you can create a connection very easily to that infrastructure um, and uh, tie your VPC into that if, if you need to. Uh, again, it's just the, the click of a button to do that. VPC uses IAM or Identity Access Management, so uh, you can actually get quite granular um, in providing access to uh, other users in your IBM Cloud account. Uh, to VPC and the VPC features, and, um, and obviously who you actually want to be able to manage your VPC for you. Uh, you can bring your own IP, so um, that's actually quite a quite a good feature. That's quite a, a feature that a lot of customers I speak to are actually after as well. So it means you can actually use your own IP addresses within the uh, within the subnets, um, which in uh, in many cases helps uh, helps development. Uh, you can also bring your own key as well. So when you create Virtual server instances, you'll notice that you actually need to have a an SSH key uh, to to then connect to those servers, uh, and you can use your own key to do that. You don't have to use a key uh, which uh, which IBM provides. Um, and uh, there's also a new API and uh, or, or CLI commands uh, that you can actually use with uh, with VPC as well, and uh, these allow you to actually um, create. VPC instances, create virtual machines and, then, and, and, and other components and actually control them as well from the command line so if you want to script things then it's a really powerful tool for doing that and uh, we may have a video on that later on too. So a little bit of quota information as well because um, there are obviously so, uh, a few limitations on, uh, on VPC so, uh, so accounts can have up to five VPCs per region um, so there's actually quite a few VPCs that you can create um, certainly as the, the number of regions that come online grow as well. So you can have up to 15 subnets in your VPC, so that allows you to create quite a complex um, network architecture if you need to. Um, so the account default is um, is to have up to 100 virtual server instances or virtual machines within within an account. So um, so if you think you might hit that limit or, or you're going to hit that limit, uh, then you can actually put a request into the IBM Cloud Support to have that uh, 100 limit actually raised. Uh, but again, it does allow you to create um, quite a quite a big and complex uh, um, environment within within virtual private cloud. Uh, again, at the account level, you can have up to 500 security groups. So, any security groups that you've already created um, do actually count towards the number of security groups. Um, but you can have up to 500 and 50 rules per group. Again, you can get quite granular uh, in in the way that you create your security groups and your uh, and therefore your virtual firewalling. And in terms of ACL, you can have up to 30 of those per region, 
uh, again with 30 outbound and 30 inbound rules. So again, you can actually create um, some quite complex rules there and, uh, and that means you can be quite uh, tight with some of your security as well. So if you want a, a bit more quota information, this, this is just a, a very few highlights um, and there's a link there where you can, uh, you can go and actually have a look and uh, see what all the different quotas are. So the next few videos are going to show you actually how to create um, a VPC and, and, and what I'll try and do is get to the point where we've actually created a um, fairly simple three tier uh, website uh, which will be load balanced as well. So, um, so the next few videos are going to show you actually how to create the VPC and the subnets, we'll show you how to create SSH keys, um, we'll show you how to create the uh, access control list rules and uh, we'll also have another look at security groups. And we'll show you how to create virtual server instances and we'll show you how to create and configure load balancers. So I've, I've decided to break these down into a number of videos just so that we don't get one great big long video which, uh, you know, which might be quite hard to watch. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and um, I'll see you next time.